introduce our third presenter for today, uh, session three, Azra Chikusic, uh, who is presenting on Prisoner's Dilemma of the European Union. Thank you. For my senior thesis in international political economy, I chose to explore the following question. How does the prisoner's dilemma help explain the difficulties of cooperation within the Euro Eurozone? So the very important question that's been asked in Europe now is, will the Eurozone eventually collapse? So in my paper, I explore the difficulties of cooperation in the short, medium, and long run. And I look at the Eurozone crisis between January 2008 and February 2013. I use these examples of Greece, Italy, Spain, France, and Germany. And I analyze the complexities and logics of cooperative and uncooperative behavior through the lenses of prisoner's dilemma. The thesis of my paper is that the prisoner dilemma illuminates why member states fail to cooperate in the short run, but cooperation prevails in the long run as the prisoner dilemma transcends to the stand-hand dilemma. The reason why the cooperative behavior eventually emerges is because the conditions of the game change. Those conditions include multiple game interactions, expectations of reciprocity, information sharing, and conditional timing on decisions. So the prisoner's dilemma is a game in the game theory that explains why the two individuals might not cooperate even if it is in the best interest to do so. So it explains uh, the following situation. There are two players. They play one shot and repeat game. There is no communication between them. They are both rational actors and they assume the other one is a rational actor as well. They make simultaneous choices in discrete time intervals and they have symmetric payoffs. So the story goes as follows. The two players, the two prisoners, are caught for the for their crime and they're put in the separate rooms and they're following this they have the following um, um, decisions to make so they can either confess meaning that they are gonna defect on the other uh, prisoner or they can cooperate meaning keep silent if both of them cooperate and keep silent they'll both get five year sentence however if one of them in effect, meaning confess, while the other cooperates, keeps silent, the one that confessed will be free, while the other one will get full 20 year sentence. If both of them confess, and the fact, meaning they'll get 10 year sentence, both of them. So, in the case of the prisoner's dilemma of the Eurozone crisis, I made the following matrix that relates to it. So, on one side, as a prisoner A, we have Greece, Italy, Spain, and France, which are currently the uh, deficit countries in the Eurozone. And the other side, as a prisoner B, I have Germany. Uh, Germany, I chose Germany because it's the, uh, the largest economy in Europe, and second, because the, in the EU institutions, uh, EU, EU, EU institutions cannot really um, help financially other um, countries to help to, you know, go after they go through the financial crisis. It has to come from the other countries, like surplus countries, through bilateral loans. So in that case, I use Germany. So in this case, um, cooperation on the side of Germany means they provide bail out funds or fiscal stimulus, while cooperation on the uh, part of Greece, Italy, Spain, or France means they fix their financial situation, they uh, uh, implement austerity measures and do very like uh, deep structural reforms. So in that case, they can either cooperate. If they all cooperate, then they all benefit, but they all pay because Germany has to pay the funds these other countries have to do very painful reforms. Um, if Germany provides the funds, meaning they cooperate while the other countries uh, don't, do not fix their finances, then Germany carries all the costs and they get practically a free ride in the short run. While the um, other side, if the other things happen so that these countries uh, do structural reforms while Germany does not provide bailout, then there is no cost for Germany, but these countries pay heavy costs. And then if all uh, parties just defect, then there is no immediate cost, but these costs are deferred for the long run. So according to prisoners' dilemma logic, the best is that they all defect, because according to prisoners' dilemma logic, uh, the best payoff in both cases, no matter, regardless what the other prisoner will do, is to defect. So the rational outcome for the prisoners will be to defect. Uh, the, now I'm going to explain a little bit of the prisoner's dilemma of the Eurozone, the crimes they made, and uh, the, the situation. So it was triggered by the financial crisis of 2008, but the roots of the crisis are much deeper than that. Uh, in the case of Greece versus Germany, um, they both they kind of had lots of um, lack of fiscal discipline. However, in that uh, Greece 
was the one that uh, has major problems to that. However, uh, when Germany also violated some of the master criteria that are concerned with the borrowing limit and debt to GDP ratios, they were not penalized for that because the excessive deficit procedure was put on hold saying that their deficit was temporarily. And after that, it lost all the credibility in all the countries continued to break the criteria. On the side of Spain, Italy versus Germany, there is a major problem of the divergence between the economies in the Europe. So when the Economic and Monetary Union was formed, they expected that the countries will converge in terms of spending, sorry, in terms of spending, wages, and inflation. However, that didn't happen. So Spain and Italy were not able to kind of reach the Germany standards, and Germany was not willing to adjust their spendings to, to reach the other nations' problems. So in that case, Spain and Italy have a dilemma. Do they need, or will they cut the spending? Because Germany kind of uh, forces them to do, to, to do so, and they want to get bailout funds. But then these countries think that if they cut the spendings, then in that case, uh, they're pushing their economy further into recession. But if they do not do that, they'll face, they risk the financial collapse. And the third case is France versus Germany. France is the second largest economy in Europe. So their main problem is that um, they have lost their competitiveness over time over Germany. And so now they cannot devalue their currency as they are part of Eurozone. So now the only way they can deal with that is through uh, government spending. So they compensate for that, and that led to debt and deficit. They also have problems of rigid labor and product markets. So now they face problems of needing to do structural reforms to be really fiscally sustainable in the long run. At the same time, they have the dilemma of signing the fiscal compact, which is uh, urged by Germany. They want to do that because they want to make the uh, member states more convergent fiscal matters in Europe. However, it requires the transfer of some level of sovereignty to the EU institutions. And France, that's more like um, social, that the has mentality of social clientism is not really ready to do so. So according to prisoners' dilemma, they all, all would need to defect. And that idea helps explain the resistance to corporations in the member states in the short run, meaning the immediate crisis. That's the time where there is not enough information, when they feel they need to de make decisions quickly, and when they don't have time to communicate with each, between, each other, between each other. However, in the medium and long run, they all realize that they'll do worse by defecting than if they cooperated. So the game slowly moves towards the optimal equilibrium. So the evidences from the uh, events that happened the last two years um, suggest the following. There was a move towards cooperative behavior because Greece was bailed out under the conditions of strict structural reforms. So they implemented reforms in pension system, public sector wage wages. Then uh, Spain and Italy also benefited from European Central Bank uh, bringing their borrowing costs down, issuing by uh, long-term uh, financing options, which means that their banks can now take that fund and buy assets such as sovereign debt. However, they also uh, got that based on their conditional reforms, such as that include more competitive practices. And then the last one, France, also did some structural reforms started, uh, such as retirement age, they raised their uh, value-added tax, bank reforms, and they ratified the fiscal compact. So why doesn't the prisoner dilemma explain the Eurozone crisis, the medium and long run? Because first there are factors such as iterate, it becomes the iterated prisoner's mm -hmm. dilemma over time. So over time there is an indefinite number of uh, game interactions and there is a large shadow future so the players don't really know um, what's going to happen and every event that's going on it's important for them to know what's to, as a result of the Eurozone crisis. Also, they, they are able to discriminate the defection by providing conditional fiscal stimulus, which is kind of a tit for task strategy, meaning that if, if we provide the other funds, funds, then you have to do structural reforms. If you don't do structural reforms, we'll not provide no, more bailout funds. So it's kind of reciprocal relationship. And at the same time, choices are not made simultaneously. And another thing is they, they, they found a way to kind of um, make non-cooperative behavior ostracized and noticed by providing the, um, giving the authority to EU Court of Justice to penalize countries for not kind of um, maintaining the criteria. 
And so uh, the next thing that's uh, happening is that the prisoner dilemma actually transcends the Stockholm dilemma, which helps explain behavior in the large groups. Uh, the main uh, reason why it best, better fit, fits the Eurozone crisis because the payoff structure is different, and because the reward of mutual cooperation is higher than the temptation of unilateral cooperation, unilateral defection. So, what's that kind of dilemma? It's a dilemma of five hunters who are deciding uh, that they either hunt a stag or a hare. Uh, if they stag a hare, they can do it unilaterally, but to, stag, uh, to hunt the stag, they have to all cooperate for that. So, in that case, um, the reward of mutual cooperation is higher than the temptation in lateral defection because it's better f they all want stack. So for the case of asymmetric payoffs that are, pres that are evident in the case of Eurozone crisis because each country has uh, faces different risks if they, if they let Eurozone collapse, this um, dilemma better explains the, uh, the tendency towards cooperation in the medium long run. And so my conclusion, based on my research, was that the cooperative behavior is likely to emerge in the medium and the long run. And as a result of that, I expect deeper integration of Eurozone is to make its collapse. Thank you. We have about three minutes for questions.